so in this video we are going to study uh, Fibonacci heaps let's quickly summarize um, so what are the different priority queues uh, that we have uh, studied so the main operations that we want to do on the priority queue are uh, add and delete minimum so this is the minimum priority queue that we are uh, uh, trying to implement and we also would like to implement uh, the minimum element uh, so uh, given the heap uh, we should be able to tell what is the minimum element then uh, decrease key delete uh, so the delete is basically in all the cases is implemented as decrease key plus uh, delete minimum so the complexity of delete will be uh, the complexity of delete mean plus decrease key then the other important thing that we want to do is uh, build heap and the last operation that we want to do is union so the what you notice is that uh, minimum is easy to keep track you just keep track uh, pointed to the minimum and uh, so the build heap is also uh, is going to be order n in all the cases let's look at a simple uh, length list implementation of the priority queue where uh, in order to maintain a, the, the priority queue i maintain a uh, um, circular link list okay so it's a doubly circular link list uh, is what we're going to maintain and I keep track of the pointer to the uh, element where the minimum is. Since I have the pointer to the minimum, uh, so if you want me to give you the minimum, I can always give the answer in order one. And if you want to add, you can add anywhere in the uh, list, right? Add in the beginning of the list. Don't change the uh, minimum pointer. Change the minimum pointer only if the number that you are adding is smaller than the minimum that you already have. And uh, if uh, so, if you want to delete the minimum. Uh, then uh, you have a problem you delete this node but uh, the next minimum can be anywhere in the uh, link list right so you have to traverse through the entire link list to figure out the uh, minimum that's where it, it takes uh, order in time decrease key if I give you the pointer to the node which needs to be uh, whose value need to be decreased uh, if I given the power value pointed to the node then I can just go there and uh, decrease the value and then if the value decreases to something smaller than the uh, minimum I can change the minimum pointer this can be done in order one. so the delete function again is going to be order n because uh, in general you might ask me to delete the minimum so in that case uh, uh, if I delete the minimum then I have to keep track of the minimum so uh, it takes order n so building a heap is just creating a link list with n elements is going to take in order n time if you give me two priority queues, since it's a doubly circular link list, if I have to just merge them, uh, this is going to take order n time, order one time. So what is very costly here is the delete minimum. Since the delete minimum is costly, the delete also is very costly. Otherwise, everything else is um, so order one. So this is what is the main focus. Uh, this is precisely the reason why we went from uh, link list to the binary heap representation. When we talked about the binary heap representation, so instead of order n here, we were able to delete the minimum in order log n time. And uh, since the delete minimum also became order log n time, uh, the delete also be, uh, delete also became order log n time. But we lost on the decrease key. If I have to do decrease key, uh, we have to do order n number of computation. And the add also became very costly, right? So, so you have to notice that uh, uh, this has become costly now and uh, uh, so the decrease key also became costly and the union suddenly became uh, very costly right so this became order n right so uh, so what we notice is that uh, so the finding the minimum this is this will remain same and the build heap anyway is going to take in all the heaps uh, order n time but the problem with the binary heap was that the union take order n uh, if you had a uh, link this representation it was just sort of one then we studied uh, binomial heaps the binomial heaps we were able to improve this order into order log n time retaining the complexity of every other operation which is same as the binary heap in the case of fibonacci heap what we are going to do is that so we're going to improve this log into order one which is same as the link list right so we're going to improve it to order one and uh, we're also going to make uh, the add also order one right so which is same as in the case of link list that's the best thing that you can do so in the case of link list the link the add and uh, union was order one right uh, so which was very fast so and the decrease key is also order one right so 
uh, we are able to uh, attain uh, these three that is GAD, uh, decrease key and the union in order one which is same as the complexity if you maintain the linkage. The only thing that we lose out is on the delete minimum. So once the delete minimum is log of n, delete is also going to be log of n because the way we are going to implement delete is uh, decrease key plus uh, delete minimum. So, uh, so this is uh, where the improvement is going to be. So add is going to be order one, decrease key will also going to be order one and um, the union is going to be order one instead of log of n. But uh, the, this is the only uh, thing which will continue to be log of n is uh, the delete mean, uh, hence uh, delete. So I have marked uh, these three things in a different color indicating that these are not the actual cost, these are amortized cost. Okay, I repeat, uh, so the complexity of the delete min decrease key and the delete operation are uh, amortized cost, these are not the actual cost. If you, in one case, if you call the delete min, the delete could min could be uh, as bad as order n. But if you do a sequence of operations, uh, then uh, if uh, you end up doing only k number of uh, delete min, then it's going to be not k into n, it's k into log of n. So now you know what is the meaning of saying that uh, amortized cost of delete min is log of n. If you do a sequence of operations, then uh, if you do, uh, then you can just add uh, log of n, not uh, really n. Okay, so that's the understanding. So with this uh, understanding, uh, let's try to define, uh, so what is a uh, Fibonacci heap? So Fibonacci is a simple collection of trees, okay? At each node, the heap property should be satisfied. It's a collection of uh, trees as in the case of a uh, binomial heap. In the case of binomial heap, each uh, um, tree had a very rigid chapter, right? So every node, every tree had to be a binomial tree of order uh, K and we were not allowed to have uh, no, two trees of the same order. All that condition have been relaxed here in the Fibonacci heaps is just a collection of trees. Okay, and uh, each node uh, should satisfy the heap property. Since we are talking about the minimum heap here, every node value at every node should be smaller than or equal to value of its children. The main uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, policy that we are going to uh, follow here, uh, we will be lazy when we are allowed to be lazy. But when we are allowed to, uh, when you are forced to do some uh, work, we will do most, little more than uh, what is required. Okay, this works in this case, right? So I don't know whether it works in um, uh, in real life, but uh, this works in the case of uh, Fibonacci heaps. So what really uh, mean by saying that uh, let's continue to be lazy as long as we are allowed to be lazy, but when we are allowed to do, forced to do something, we'll do something more, right? So uh, that should be enough, right? So that's what is the main principle here. Let's look at. Uh, uh, <coughs> an example of a um, Fibonacci heap. Uh, this is a collection of uh, trees, right? So uh, there is a uh, the number of trees is four here, and uh, trees can be any general case uh, trees, and uh, all the roots are uh, connected by a doubly uh, circular list. Okay, all the root nodes are uh, connected by a, a doubly circular list, which we call it as the root list. And whichever tree has the minimum element, uh, that is the minimum pointer that we are going to uh, keep track of. So when I say that I will uh, give you a Fibonacci heap, what I give you is the, the pointer to this minimum node, which is part of the uh, root list. Right. So once you have the root list from every node, uh, so what you can say is that uh, you also know how many children are there and you also get the list of uh, all the children. And if the, it is part of the root list, you know what is the next element and what is the previous element. All this information is kept right in each of these nodes. So few more definitions on uh, Fibonacci heap. Uh, uh, so rank of X is defined as the number of children uh, of every node, right? So for example, if you take uh, 64, there are no child for it. So the rank of 64 is zero. Rank of 14 is two because it has exactly uh, two children. Rank of four is three because it has three children. Rank of H is defined as the maximum rank of any node uh, in the Fibonacci heap. In this example, the node with the maximum rank, uh, maximum number of children is 4, which is 3. Um, so the node 4 here has 3 children, so which is the maximum uh, child any node uh, that it has, right? So 
uh, rank of this particular tree is uh, 3. Trees of H uh, is the number of trees. Uh, the number of trees in this example is 4. Some nodes are going to be uh, mark nodes. Right? In this example, there are 3 mark nodes which are namely 34, 23 and 54. So what is the importance of mark nodes? Uh, we will come back to this when you do uh, certain specific operations on the Fibonacci heap. Uh, as far as now, it is considered pictorially it is going to be mark flag. But when you implement, uh, there is a flag uh, which is a boolean flag which is uh, called as marked. If it is true, that means that it is a mark node. If it is false, means that it is not a mark node. Right? So what you need to know is that uh, the nodes, some of the nodes are mark nodes and the number of mark nodes in the tree is called as the marks of edge. In this Fibonacci heap, there are exactly three nodes so which are mark nodes. And the last definition is when I say n is the number of nodes uh, in H. In this tree, the total number of nodes is uh, um, 2 plus uh, 4 plus 1 uh, plus uh, you have 6 nodes uh, in the other tree. So this is basically the total number of nodes is uh, 13. Since uh, we are going to talk about hematized analysis, I think we will start, first start with the potential function. So once I begin with the potential function, then um, it will be clear uh, how the amortized cost is defined. Because the amortized cost is the actual cost plus the uh, potential difference. The moment I define my potential function, then the amortized cost is defined for each of these operations. So in this example, for Fibonacci heaps, uh, we are going to use uh, the potential function as given this Fibonacci heap, uh, you count the number of trees and also count the number of mark nodes. The potential function of a Fibonacci heap is defined as the number of trees in a H plus twice the number of mark nodes. Okay. Uh, in our definition, it is trees of H plus 2 into uh, marks of H. In this case, the number of uh, trees is 4 and the number of mark nodes is 3. Uh, so, uh, the potential of this particular data structure is 4 plus 2 into the number of mark nodes which is 3. So, the which turns out to be uh, 10. 4 plus 6 is 10. So, the potential of this data structure at this point of time uh, is 10. So, now we know what is a uh, Fibonacci heap. You know what are mark nodes. You know what are trees. Uh, and um, <coughs> so, you know the structure of the uh, Fibonacci heap now. You also notice that every node uh, uh, satisfies the uh, heap property. Uh, so that is if you take any node, uh, it has a value which is smaller than or equal to all its children. right? So now we want to do uh, some operations on it. So when I do some operations, we also want to keep track of uh, the actual cost and also the amortized cost. When I want to find the amortized cost, the only thing that you have to look at is the potential difference which you have to add to the actual cost. Now with these definitions, let us look at uh, the simple um, operation. So <coughs> how do you insert a node? Let us say that I want to insert 95 to this collection of Fibonacci heaps. Mm -hmm. So create a node with 95, add to the root list, right? So you just add it to the root list and uh, say so if I am adding a number which is smaller than the minimum then you have to change the pointer to the minimum. In this case, if I add 95 to this root list, uh, minimum will continue to be 4. But if I am adding, let's say 2, then uh, 2 is the new, uh, the minimum pointer should start pointing to that. So this is a circular list. Uh, this uh, one created node is considered as a tree and it's being added to the root list. So when I add this uh, 95 to the root list, the Fibonacci heap will look like this. So this is basically four pointer changes. Uh, so you are adding a node to a doubly linked list. Uh, this is about a constant number of uh, pointer changes. And the uh, what is change in potential? The change in potential is the number of trees will increase by one. The number of non mark nodes will not change. So the, the actual cost uh, is uh, three or four uh, pointer changes. And uh, the change in potential is exactly one because the number of trees uh, in the collection went up by one. So the actual cost is order 1 and also the amortized cost uh, of uh, insert is order 1. Now let's look at the other easy operation that we can do. So let's say that if I given two heaps, then uh, how do you merge uh, these two heaps? Right? So I have two heaps, so one on the left hand side, the another one is the Fibonacci heap on the right hand side. So if I had to merge these two heaps, what all that I need to do is merge two circular linked list. Right? So the root list is basically a circular linked list, I have to merge these two. So I have to make uh, again constant number of uh, you know, pointer changes. Um, 
and after the merge uh, uh, you look at the two minimum pointers uh, in the left hand side here 14 is the minimum and the right hand side uh, the minimum is 4 so after the merge uh, you only keep track of the pointer to uh, 4 so and uh, so in summary we defined a fibonacci heap as a uh, collection of trees uh, satisfy with uh, each node satisfying the heap property and we also defined as the uh, potential function to be the number of trees plus the number of mark nodes when you want to add an element uh, into the heap uh, you just create a new node and add it to the root list so the actual cost of the operation is order one and the change in potential is uh, you are increasing the number of trees by one so the uh, change in potential is one so the amortized cost of this uh, add operation is uh, order one so when you want to find the union of two heaps uh, so what all that you need to do is to just take the two circular list and uh, merge these two circular list the actual cost of merging two circular list is order one and uh, in this case the number of trees also does not change and the number of mark nodes also does not change the change in potential is zero so the actual cost as well as the amortized cost uh, for uh, finding the merge of two uh, Fibonacci heaps is order one and uh, since the yank can be done in order one so the build heap is a very easy function now you add uh, uh, one number uh, at a time call add n number of times uh, each of the add is uh, order one so the build heap can be uh, implemented uh, just by calling the uh, add n number of times uh, so the build heap function is also linear time so we have seen uh, three easy very easy operations that can be performed on uh, uh, build heap uh, in fact if you just want the minimum you have to just uh, return the pointer to the minimum because in the circular link list it's easy to keep track of the pointer to the minimum that's the only pointer that you keep track of right in the entire uh, Fibonacci heap so you are able to return the minimum in order one uh, you can uh, and union in order one and you can do the um, you can do the build heap in linear time so the here uh, we did not use the uh, potential function very carefully so the potential did not change or it either increased slightly because we are doing the easy operations the main uh, two operations uh, on the uh, fibonacci heap or uh, so one is the uh, decrease key operation and the other one is the uh, deleting the minimum okay in the next video let's uh, focus on deleting the minimum element